a pastelillos. Um, another name for it is empanadas, depending on where you're from. But it's uh, it's kind of like a pastry puff, I guess. And it's going to be filled with meat and cheese. Um, we like to put a little bit of potato in ours and also uh, a little bit of onion and green pepper. So what I'm doing right now is I'm chopping very small a little bit of potato. And we're going to chop up some onion. And uh, we're going to kind of stir fry it a little bit to soften up the potatoes. And then we're going to add our meat to make our filling for our empanadas or pastelillos. And that's what we're going to do. Just got a, a couple of small potatoes here. I got a small onion. And we're going to stir fry that up. I got about a quarter of a green pepper. So I like green pepper as well um, with my meats so that's what we're doing today I hopefully you guys have been enjoying some of the videos that I've been putting out there on how to enjoy Cisco Smokehouse products um, you know feel free to subscribe and share so that your friends can see what's going on as well and uh, we'll go ahead and take this to the next level. So today it's empanadas. Happy New Year. It's 2019 now. I have a pot pan over here that's actually nice and hot now with a little bit of oil. Just a little bit of oil. And I'm going to go ahead and add these potatoes and green peppers and a little bit of onion that I have into that pan. And we're going to go ahead and stir fry this a little bit. I want the potatoes to soften up. And then from there, we shall add the meat, which today we're going to do, I'm doing a lot of chicken sausage lately, but I kind of like it. So that's what we're going to do today. We have uh, Cisco's smoked sausage. I'm going to go ahead and cover that a little bit so it could get softer, and then we'll add some meat. Okay, guys, this is almost ready. I'm just going to add a little bit of salt and pepper to this because... Uh, you know, it's just potatoes and onion and green pepper. And I just wanted to get a little soft. And then I'm going to go ahead and add the meat. I'm going to do today a pound and a half of Cisco's Puerto Rican sausage. Um, yeah, this is about ready to add the meat. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Uh, with all those potatoes, if I don't add any salt and pepper, it's going to kind of bland everything else out. So now that that's ready, I'm going to add my pound and a half. Of Puerto Rican sausage. If you buy a Cisco's smoked Puerto Rican sausage standard with the links, you can just take and peel the casing off of it, and then this is what you would have just the meat, the ground meat. Now, this one was slightly frozen, so right here it's a little frozen, but I'm gonna go ahead and brown this meat up real quick along with these vegetables, mix it all up, and once it's all brown and ready to go, we're gonna let it cool a little bit. And then you'll see what guys, we do This is done. The chicken is nice and browned. The potatoes, always just uh, test one just to make sure. Yep, soft enough. And now you just want to put this away in a bowl and stick it in the refrigerator to cool because you don't want to make it while it's hot. That would be probably a little bad. It would be too hot for your, uh, your discos. We'll talk about discos in a little bit, but that's it. Stick it in the bowl, stick it in the refrigerator, allow it to cool. While you're doing that, you can go ahead and prepare your so cheese. So you can use any kind of cheese that you like. Today I'm going to be using Cisco's Smoked Gouda. Um, it's a nice, softer type cheese, so it melts pretty well. And we're just going to grate that up real quick while we're waiting for our meat and potato mixture to cool. So go ahead and grate up with any cheese grater you have, um, any flavor of Cisco smoked cheese or any other cheese you like. I prefer the Cisco smoked cheese because the point is I'm gonna get a nice smoky flavor on my empanada slash pastelillo. I'm saying both names because uh, Puerto Ricans know it as pastelillo, uh, other countries know them as empanadas, but at the same time, it's always, it's sort of the same thing. It's a stuffed pastry that you fry so that's what it is that we're making today so grate up your cheese while you're waiting for everything to cool off 
and then I'll show you how to stuff these pastries. Okay. So our meat is basically cooled off. It's no longer steaming, so it's going to be easy to deal with, easy to work with. I went ahead and stuck it in the freezer in this metal bowl, and then I stirred it every few minutes for about 10 to 15 minutes. So now it's it's got some warmth to it, but it's not hot, so I'll be able to deal with it now. All right, we have our cheese that's been grated. That's the smoked Gouda cheese. And then this is what our empanadas are, our discos. Yes, discos, 10 discs. It says for empanadas, or it's dough for turnover pastries. It's a Goya brand. It's the brand that we uh, generally use. You will find it in, in the freezer section um, of your local grocery store. Sometimes they're white or sometimes they're orange like this. Um, either one works. We prefer the orange ones. Um, it has like other seasonings in it and so for us it tastes a little bit better. Um, when you get them they're frozen so you need to let them thaw out. If you have time for conventional thawing methods, put them in the refrigerator and they'll thaw out that way. If you don't have time for that like we didn't today, then you can stick this whole bag in cold water and let it thaw out that way. The fast, that's the fast way, all right? So what you're gonna do is you'll start with your empanada, your disco, and you'll put a spoon of meat, the meat and potato mix. You put a little bit of cheese, and then you fold the whole thing. Now, when you fold it, it's kind of like a taco, all right? Use your fingers to keep it on the inside, and you want the tips to touch in the end. And when I do that, I sort of squeeze on that so I can make it stretch a little bit, and it's creating a seal. And to complete that seal, you use a fork. And you just push down on the fork and slide out, and that's gonna complete your seal. Okay, that keeps all the goodies on the inside so that when you're frying, it doesn't all come out, and it's gonna be a delicious pastry. Now what you can do also is flip it to the other side and seal the other side as well. Now, uh, some people like to stretch these discos, these empanadas. If you poke a hole, like you see right there, it created a hole. It's okay, just pinch it and it'll basically seal itself back up, okay? Put that to the side and do the others. Um, if you would like to stretch these discos, which you certainly can, um, get a roller and you can roll these out a little bit and it will stretch it a little bit further. Um, we tend to just use it the way it is, but some people like to stretch them, so that's an option, okay? All right, so that's it. Take your empanadas, fill them with the ingredients. I guess the advantage of stretching them is you can probably stuff more product inside of it. Also, when you go to your grocery store to find these, they do have two different sizes. This is the small discos, but they also have larger ones. So if you find that yours are larger, that will be why. And the larger ones just means, again, you can put more food inside of it, and it will take less to fill people up. Like this, we tend to eat about three or four a piece. Uh, but if you're eating it with something else, like with rice um, or something like that as a full meal, then you'll probably be okay with just two of them. Uh, but it is very delicious, so you may end up getting that third one after all. But that's it. Take all your discs, fill it up with product, pinch them to seal them, and put them in a plate or wherever you're going to put them until it's time to fry. If you should happen to have a deep fryer, that would be the best. Um, set your deep fryer. You should already have it preheating to about 375 degrees. And it, it should be getting ready while you're doing this process, uh, if not sooner. If you do not have a deep fryer, you can totally do this on the stove top. Just get a, uh, a deep pan with plenty of oil and start preheating that oil in the deep pan so that you can fry it the old school way. That works too. No big deal. Any way that you can fry this, but it does need to be, for best results, completely in the oil. So deep fryer is best or a big pan. Uh, or a big pot, I guess, with oil. You can do it that way. Pretty simple process. Sometimes it takes a little bit of practice to do this part, but it's no big deal. 
give us a few minutes to get these done, and we'll show you. If you wanted to uh, stretch these, you can. Some people do. Take a rolling pin. I would leave the uh, paper on both sides of it so it doesn't stick anywhere. And you just roll it, roll it out both ways. Kind of flip it, roll it out, and it stretches it a little bit. You get a little bit more real estate for filling it. So nothing wrong with doing that if you want to do that. Have a little bit more real estate. And then I'll show you a side by side after I fill this one on how it compares to the original ones. So it thins it out a little bit. And you stuff it the same. Get your meat, your potato mixture. I like to have them as stuffed as possible. Add your cheese. And then fold it up. Keep all your goodies on the inside. I start from the corner to create a seal. And work all the way around. Once my seal is created, then I use the fork to completely lock it in. Flip it over, lock it in on that side, and all your goodies should stay in. Now if you compare that one to the original one, you can see it's a little bit bigger. Quite a bit more real estate that you can add some more. So, you know, if you like to get the most that you can out of these, then go ahead and stretch it, and you'll get, I don't know, probably an extra ounce or so of food in there. Okay, so as you can see, I used about half of what I had as far as meat and most of the cheese. I, I ground up, I grated up about a quarter pound of that smoked Gouda and I did a pound and a half of meat. What's cool about this though is this same mixture can be now used in the morning for breakfast, mix it up with some eggs. Or option two is I can have it for dinner tomorrow and we can call this tacos and some regular tortillas. So. We have options and it's never gonna be a waste, so that's what you can do if you do have any extras. Uh, personally, I kinda wasn't thinking, and I'm used to doing the larger discos, um, but when we went out to the grocery store today, we they only had the small ones, so that's what we did. So, no big deal, that's what you can do with the extras. So now my fryer is ready. Um, I have this deep fryer here. I'm not gonna say the name, because they don't pay me for it, but you might recognize it. And uh, now we're just going to go ahead and drop these in this hot grease. So be very careful that you don't burn yourself. And drop them in there and they will begin to fry. It doesn't take very long. Um, for me, I can actually do all 10 of these right now. Just gently drop them in. You'll notice right away that they'll begin to float. That's kind of a trait of empanadas. They fry pretty quickly. That's why it was important that the meat on the inside was already cooked because all you're really doing now is frying the pastry and sort of heating it up. It only takes a couple of minutes. Just want to make sure that it doesn't burn. And if you catch them floating on top, you know, sometimes you can flip it to the other side so that both sides fry evenly. Okay guys, that's all she wrote. These empanadas are done. You're just really, like I said, frying the pastry on the outside. Everything on the inside was already cooked. So as long as that outside is fried to a golden perfection like this, then it's going to be done on the inside as well. So go ahead and lift that out of the grease and allow it to rest. Um, and kind of dry up a little bit. Give it about, I don't know, three or four minutes uh, to cool and serve hot. Make sure you enjoy that. Um, 
not really any dipping sauces or anything for this thing. You're just going to be able to enjoy the melty cheese and uh, the delicious meats on the inside. So this is uh, Cisco's <laughs> Smokehouse Empanadas, or, you know, I'm Puerto Rican, so we call them pastelillos, and that's how it's done. Hey guys, this is your final product right here. So I have two nice empanadas, and I got some yellow rice, which, by the way, this is not from Cisco Smokehouse. This is courtesy of Sol y Mar Caribbean Foods, LLC. You have to check them out, too. They got some great, great food. Um, but yeah, so let's uh, give it a taste. Hopefully I don't burn my mouth, because I don't want to wait any longer. Mmm. 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 Wow. I like that. This is my first time making empanadas with, mm, with Cisco Smokehouse sausage. Mmm. And the smoked cheese. Very nice. So, that's just another meal idea from me, Chef Cisco, at Cisco Smokehouse. I hope you enjoy it.